I don't want to make any like excuses for Quincy. I think they did mess up and they lost the Beast Coast, but they're actually in the same boat as uh, Business Associates. They haven't played in like over two and a half weeks uh, in terms of officials as well. Uh, they were also taking a short break and now they're back. Uh, maybe, you know, still rusty like Business Associates are. Their laning is not terrible, but their mid their mid game they weren't really like playing together like a team uh I, you can see like all their individual abilities are all there they just need to figure out like how to group up earlier and how to remove beast coast ability to come back from a game essentially yeah so let's see how they will do this game and as we see it phoenix is banned phoenix is banned is gone and they actually go for the Wyvern first pick. They didn't actually want to take the Phoenix first pick themselves. That's why they banned it. Yep. And now they go for the Wyvern first pick. Beast Coast banning the same exact heroes with the uh, Klinks and the Mirana. So this means that Beast Coast are not going to get Wyvern or the Phoenix since it got picked up for uh, Quincy crew first. Yeah, no Wyvern, no Phoenix. Um, could go for the Monkey King still, but of course probably don't want to grab it quite this early on. Huh. Definitely not. So I like that. I love it. I love Silencer. This is one of my favorite heroes. I mean, it's going to be a support, I'm sure. It got buffed a little bit. Uh, Curse does a little bit more damage. Uh, also with the talent, I believe. Let me check a quick look here at Silencer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they increase the damage of Curse, and he's got a ta level 15 talent that does plus 30 more Arcane Curse damage. It's really nice. Damn. And this hero is actually a very good counter to uh, Void Spirit. Uh, Voice Spirit spams a lot of spells, right, in the fights. So yeah. before he gets Yules, it's going to be very annoying. And he would need to use Yules defensively to actually remove the Arcane Curse if he doesn't want to be slowed down heavily and constantly taking, like, 50 damage a second from that Arcane Curse. Yeah, and that means you can't really set up for your Remnants as easily because if you do use that, then as you said, you're going to be left defenseless when that Arcane, uh, when that ultimate gets dropped on you. So mm -hmm. very hard to play Void Spirit into these guys. And Quincy Crew, as we know, love their Void. Winter White. So, right now, Quincy Crew really thinking about a hero that's possibly a flex that they can pick for, you know, a core, or they'll just end up with a position for. Now, Silencer is a very difficult hero to draft against. There aren't a lot of heroes that are really good against him, but they go for the bounty. Okay. I don't think MSS has played this hero in a very, very long time. But this is like, this might be one of the new flavors, right? With, uh, he got buffed a little bit, and the patch is a little different with the heroes. So, Bounty Hunter, not that bad against Silencer, to be honest. Not that bad, no. He can, uh, you know, Bounty Hunter loves playing against teams that stuns as well, where he can just weave in and out and uh, steal loads of gold and be super annoying. So, certainly feels okay in that respect. And he's going to go straight in for the Spectre on Beast Coast. Okay, so second pick to pick. I don't hate it. Yeah. Very interesting. It's not bad. Mm, it's a good hero to jump the Winter Wyvern. It's not really affected by the curse, right? And yep. even if Winter Wyvern uses the third skill on someone, uh, the Cold Embrace, Spectre's uh, Desolate can still do damage through it. So that's also very nice. Um, I'm not so sure what, what I think of the Spectre. Spectre Saunter is not that amazing of a combo. You do have a lot of slow in your lane, though. But other than that, you know, you're still lacking disables and ways to really kill your opponent. Well, it's a problem not being able to kill your opponent. Yeah, it's, it, it's a very kind of low impact draft so far from Beast Coast, has to be said. Like the Silencer mm -hmm. and the Spectre, mm -hmm. these guys kind of have some niche properties about them, but in terms of actual burst damage, there is none between these two, really, unless like, the Silencer gets like a bajillion intelligence, which uh, probably isn't going to happen. So definitely need to uh, pick up some kind of high impact mid laner here for Beast Coast. But that seems to fit them very well. You know, it's, that's very much um, Chris Lux MO. Um, maybe not the TA, but something more kind of punchy would definitely uh, feel very good for Beast Coast this game. So we're into this big bu uh, boulevard of bands now in the in the middle of this uh, draft as you get three yeah. bands in between. And uh, we started off with a Storm and a Quop band out by uh, Quincy Crew. So yeah, I mean, those are those big punchy mid laners, right? Like those two those two guys, high mobility, high burst potential, which they just want to take out of the equation. And also Storm and Quop love playing in a team with a Silencer as well because, you know, with that science around it gives them much more safety they can kind of go deeper mm -hmm. go harder and not get caught out as easy <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter thieving come on focus up buddy 
<laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, <laughs> and get out, huh? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um. So Stormcloud, like you said, yeah. I I think it's also heroes that uh, Quinn doesn't want to play in this game too. So you definitely want to ban heroes that you won't be playing yourself, uh, surely. And then Beast Coast getting rid of the Ursa and. The Underlord, I think Ursa, a carry being banned out is perfect. They already have their own carry. And Underlord, actually, as an offlaner, is really good against Spectre. Does percentage-based damage, which is amazing. And on top of that, uh, can buy aura items. That's the one thing that Spectre hates, right? Heroes yeah. who buy aura items and group up and create, like, this death ball kind of situation. Spectre has a really hard time fighting into death ball. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You With want you want you want your time, and also you know, one of your spells literally only does damage if you're apart from each other. I think that speaks for itself, to be honest with you. So, yeah, definitely uh, want to get that underlord out of here and stop that uh, early kind of roaming from these guys. But uh, I kind of want to revisit this bounty hunter a little bit because I said that uh, Beast Coast's opening was a little bit you know not un unpunchy, but I think Quincy Crew are exactly the same, right? Like they don't really mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm a way to burst people down, like they don't have a huge amount of control while well, they've got the Wyvern ulti, but yeah, I, I think this Bounty Hunter hero in the first phase is kind of interesting and kind of sets out a, a definite plan for Quincy Crew for the rest of the draft, which now Beast Coast can kind of look at and try and counter. And they do ban out the Void well, Spirit anyway, even though they ban, they picked Silencer, so that's really interesting. I mean, maybe they don't think like Silencer is a counter to Void Spirit, right? Like it's not straightforward in that sense. And also you're not playing Silencer a lot. In the recent patch this is like a new hero that you know they're they've decided that they want to play with right so because of that they're probably not thinking too much about it and when they banned the monkey king on the side of quincy crew they were expecting quincy crew to go for that void spirit like last game they felt like the reason void spirit was not a factor is because of the monkey which yeah. is true because he did extremely well in the game and now beast coast go with a clock okay so clock is really good against bounty when you cog him up um, he can't get out, so it's a really good way to counterplay against him. Mm -hmm. And now Quincy Crew, like you're talking about the punch, but here's where the three cores come out, right? The three cores of Quincy Crew and how they're gonna play. But to be honest, I wonder if Bounty Hunter could potentially be a core this game and just play up against the Spectre, just steal his gold throughout the laning stage. <laughs> just, just rob him. Just follow him around. Rob him. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean... yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if he keeps mugging the Spectre, what's he gonna do? How's he going to get that item? How's he going to get that radiance, right? Well, I guess that's why they picked the clockwork, right? Like, they, if they do try to do that, then you've got Catch a hero which can punish right. it really well. It wins long range yeah. as well, so. And they're also losing a lot of reserve time. My goodness, for Quincy Crew. They're down to 15 seconds. They go for the DP. So this DP is going to be the team fighter that punch that you're looking for. I think DP mm -hmm. is actually great against Spectre here. Yeah, uh, Because you can actually stand your ground. Like I said, one of the death ball heroes, right? And that's what DP is. He wants his team to play around him, play together, try to take objectives. And Spectre is not going to want to haunt into an exorcism. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's also percentage-based damage versus Spectre, which I mentioned before is pretty damn good. And obviously objective taking against Spectre is really nice as well. If you can take objectives early, before Spectre can really come online, you're feeling pretty good about things. So Beast Coast now into their next pick. Got a lot more time on the board than uh, Quincy Crew does, so they can really take their time and think through these picks here. But they've got to get themselves a mid laner and I'm guessing an off laner because it seems like they've got their one, their four, and their five now picked up in these uh, three picks. So... Mid laner and off laner. Hmm. And they've got final, final pick, so I imagine that's going to be the Chris Luck pick. So they're probably going to grab their off laner right now. Yep, for sure. I mean, they can. They don't want to grab the mid because they don't know the DPs on the side lane, right? <laughs> you definitely don't want to be counter picked by Quinn. That's going to be a very sad situation to be in. So um, Beast Coast, off lane wise, they, he's kind of blind, right? He only sees the bounty and the Winter Wyvern. And he needs something that pairs well with the clock. Because if you don't, then you're going to have a very low tempo lineup on the side of Beast Coast. And Quincy Crew actually have a very fast tempo lineup at this moment. Hmm. Yeah, what you need a brick well wall, I feel. You need, you need a brick wall in either your mid or your off lane. What about Mars? So How about feels... Puck, actually? Oh my goodness. I, I imagine Puck being pretty legit this game. But because they can use it with lane shove as well. Lena! Oh, that's like lane Puck, shove. But not really. But that's Chris Luck, dude. That, that is Chris Luck's hero. 
Yeah. That's... Unless he wants to play Sansa mid, which he used to do sometimes, but I don't Actually, think so. Actually, hold on. What if there's a Lena 4 and a Clockwork 3? Clock 3? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're still looking to juggle the heroes around a bit. I exactly. mean, if that's something they that's consider, I mean, then right? yeah. they'll probably consider the opposite as well. So Exactly. So if they're thinking, like, if the DP is going mid, they might want to put the Lena mid, right? And then they can, like, last pick another, like, offlaner or something. Beastmaster. Okay. So it's going to be a Beast Bounty. Um... I actually don't feel this Beastmaster pick, honestly. I'm not sure. I think this Beastmaster pick actually made their team fighting abilities a bit weaker. It did make their snowballing ability stronger, though, right? Like, if you fall behind a beast, this Beastmaster lineup now, your towers are going to melt like crazy. Yeah, but, exactly. I mean, that's... Yeah. I really do think this is, again, Quincy Crew, they just want to snowball, dude. They just, they just right, want right. to take down these kills. You know, Bounty Hunter, Death Prophet, Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. These are three heroes which are really looking to just find their momentum and just kind of run a Beast Coast with it. And but, uh, they ban out the... Yeah, I ban. I like that LC ban quite a mm, lot. That's just good. stopping the wake up. For that's an offer that sure. can do that for them. Maybe Beast Coast can run a Baden and they're off laner. I, I, that doesn't sound too hot, to be no, honest. But no. I, yeah, it's like... Too slow, you know? This Beastmaster pick, like, I can see how Doesn't it's good, enough. but at the same time, the Beastmaster is not really adding on to their team fight in this game. Which I feel like that's what they kind of need. Because they have the ways to fight. They already have the ways to push out lanes. They just need to add on to their team fight so that it's, like, extremely solid. But, you know, it's okay. Whatever. We'll see what uh, their last pick is on Quincy Crew. What carry they're going to aim at this game. Do you think an anti mage could be good this game? Like anti mage is amazing against Claw, Lina, Sansa. I was literally, Lina, I was literally just thinking Sansa. that. Like Sansa right. is kind of like annoying until you get Manta because you suddenly have to get locked down. But yeah, I mean mm -hmm. the, these are just two heroes you can just absolutely implode in the leader and the yeah. Sansa. I think if they go AM route, the Beastmaster makes a bit more sense because Beast and DP can get these lanes out by enough time for the AM to get his items too. And then later when AM does join the fight, the Beastmaster is like super effective hero in this lineup. He's going to provide auras, Vladimir's, like, it's going to be amazing for an AM, this game. And they also banned out the Legion Commander. Oh, they also banned Necro. Now, another hero that could be good with this is Terrorblade, then. Right? With that yeah. Necro ban, I'm, what... I'm thinking they're thinking Terrorblade here. That's what it feels like, yeah. And then you guys got four heroes, which are going to roam the map together, try and build up a bit of oh, advantage. Oh, AM's banned. AM, AM is banned, banned out yeah. at these coasts, okay. That uh, makes a lot of sense. All right, here we go, TV. Take it. Ursa's gone. What are you going to play? TV. This is not a Morphling, right? You're playing a Silencer. Like it's, it, you could like mess up sometimes here and there, and that could slow you is, down. Is Lycan too all in? I think Lycan's too all in. Oh, Troll. Okay. All right. Of course. It's Yawar. Troll it yeah. is. Got to win the lanes, bro. He's not, not going to pick <laughs> TV. He's got to win the lanes. Got to get Troll Warlord. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, two heroes, dual wielding axes for Quincy Crew as well. You know, it was uh, synergy there or, or, or something. I don't know. Uh, final pick up a Beast Coast, though. They've uh, got to get themselves an offlaner, which lanes well into Troll Warlord. Who could that be? It's not many of them. Trolls are very strong. That Rider is already banned. That's yeah. very hard. Um, I mean, you make. I mean, Phoenix. Not Phoenix, obviously. A Lich! So it is clock offlane after all, I guess. Wait, Let's see. no. Tomato spec. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it is Wait clock offlane. It. Wait, well, what Wait about Sansa? Where's Sansa yep. going? Maybe it's Sansa middle? And Alina <laughs> as the four? It's a four clock. So who's the offlaner? The Sansa or the Lina? Lina's the offlaner. <laughs> so they're going to make Lina <laughs> offlane. I don't like either of those. <laughs> okay, so Lina's the offlaner with a clockwork position four. Okay. I, I don't. I don't know if Beast Coast even knew what heroes they were gonna. Oh wait, hold on. No, Chris Luck, Lena, <laughs> Whisper on the Sansa. Oh right, they were missing their mid too. What the heck? Yeah, Lena's the offlaner. Yeah. Sansa's the Sansa's the offlaner. Lena's the mid. All right, I I don't know. That Lich pick just confused the hell out of me. That's for I mean, sure. Me but too. they have me too. It's no they have ways expecting. to fight. They have ways to fight. That's for sure. The only problem is um. Their tower damage is a bit lacking, right? So they need to they need to win multiple fights in order to keep up with Quincy Crew. Yeah, because Quincy Crew is going to take towers. It's going to be very easy for them. Do you want to see the Spectre Radiance this game, or do you think well you would rather see 
like a kind of, I don't know, I can almost see like a Heaven's Halberd, you know, go Sajin Yasha, move into Halberd Manta game. Maybe start with Diffuse or something sector. like that. Interesting. Yeah. I, I can I've see that working really that. well versus the troll. Okay, well, I do think Radiance is really good against Beastmaster and his summons, especially if he goes for Necrobook. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but I can also see that Manta Diffu would allow him to fight a little bit better and tank yeah. for his allies and stuff. Because he actually needs to do that. His team is very fragile. He's got a Lina and a Sansa who need to chill in the back. And yeah. if they get jumped, they're probably dead. So, yeah, I don't so know. This lineup it. is very confusing. I, I I got really confused by Beast Coast here with that last Lich pick. But I see why they picked it. They want that defensive ability um, against Beast and Troll with a shield. Also adds a lot of magic damage, team fights. Like I, I see why they did it, but still, it's very confusing. Very confusing. Alrighty, let's get into it. Game number two of Beast Coast versus Quincy Crew, where we have currently at Beast Coast leading by one game. Can Prepare Quincy Crew pull battles. it back? Oh Give me a percentage. Where is this one going for you, Thief? Oh my god, I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't even know, dude. <laughs> Let me think about this. Um, I feel like Quincy Crew do have the more balanced lineup, but I feel like Beast Coast, they're going to do some shenanigans where they're just going to kill everybody. And he's going to keep killing everybody, you know? <laughs> it's hard to see it not going that way again. I mean, I'm looking at his top lane. I'm looking at how is the Spectre going to do? You've got the Beastmaster and you've got the Bounty Hunter who are going to be laning mm. into the Spectre. Is she going to have a good lane with a Lich sitting behind her? Yes. Probably. Like, probably. I think so. I think she will have a good lane. I think Tomato can carry this one. I I, I really yeah. want to, I don't want to see him go Radiant. Well, I know that it's good see... against the Beastmaster, but I really think mm. it's, a, it's a diffusal kind of game. Uh, you... I think the problem here is the silencer right he's a liability in this game <laughs> yeah okay. true. so he's gonna go off lane he's and if there's a troll like using whirling axes on him and svg drops the arctic burn he's gonna die if the clockwork is not there so mm -hmm. that's a very you know awkward situation for a core to be in what the f just happened so i don't understand the pick Yeah, Troll Wyvern in the bottom lane, they're going to be leaning into the Clockwork and the Wisp. Uh, mm, yeah. uh, what about a mid matchup? we got Chris Luck versus Quinn, uh, so Death Prophet versus uh, Lena. They're not the same hero, right? Like, they both have the same Q. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the only thing they have in common. But, you know, no, no, other than that, uh, I, I, I think it's kind of... The Lena favored lane because she she just outranges the Death Prophet, doesn't she? Like you can't really get off Spirit Siphon very easily against Alina. That's one of your spells just not really existing. And I think Alina can just kind of get a little bit of advantage on CS. Yeah, um, I think for the most part, Lena is really hard to get the Siphon onto her right in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be something makes. Uh, DP not be able to use her entire toolkit. I do think that with the bounty hunter though, this Lina is also a liability in this game. Because if the bounty just gets some lane... Like for example, if you pull some creeps back like this, I don't know if you can watch me draw on the minimap. Yeah. If you pull some creeps like this for the Beastmaster, he can just easily rotate his way into the mid lane and just kill with the DP and the... Uh, with that Obra Venom on the bounty hunter. So... There's also that potential for uh, Quincy Crew. Yeah, this bounty could be really annoying this game, but as we mentioned before, you know, the Clockwork's going to kind of try and be the one to control up the bounty's impact and, and just stop him from just hunting down uh, the Spectre and stealing his gold constantly. So they've, uh, they've dealt with that quite well. So it's... And then to the top lane, let's just kind of rocking up, seeing what he can see. Maybe, uh, maybe uh -oh. go and like, grab a cheeky, uh -oh, cheeky first blood. Oh, there we go. Dear. I don't know. Did you focus the Whisper's clock? Right? gonna get oh. out here. He's okay. Yeah, the clockwork's the one who's dead. Blocks from your what? Being a bit cheeky here. He's got the axes in two seconds, but the clockwork's got boots. He's flying away. Good luck. Cogs come out. He's trying to get himself away here into the. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna drive run back MSS. to lane. Oh, Scarfield. You should have just accepted it. Uh, is he dead though? 
It's good. He's there comes good, a slow dude. from Assess. Right click. He He's got a not. second shadow. Right. Scrope build, move! Move! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he wants to get that value mana burn, dude. It's all calculated, <laughs> sure, bro. Sure, sure. It's all yeah, calculated. That's what it was. That, that, that really was. <laughs> That really was what it was. Jesus, he's really squeezing every little bit of uh, value out of his, uh, his his return to base here, I guess. Now Whisper's all alone, though. I mean, he's got the glaives, though, so he can he can really oh trade into these supports Dude. pretty heavily and get some damage to... They, they and, can uh... go on him, honestly, but they just don't want to get that lane pushed out at the moment. After this deny mid, they might actually consider going on him. It's a lot of damage that Troll and Winter Wyvern can do to that Sansa, but he does have a healing self, so he's going to back off Salve up, so maybe it's not that worth it for yeah, him to push out the well. lane. Yeah, so they just want to like be able to deny as many creeps as they can and keep the wave right in front of the tower. Oh, here we go. No, they're making the go. They're throwing the just spells into Whisper here, but uh, yeah, I mean, it just gets him really low, and it's really low commitment as well, you know? Arctic Burn, okay, that's a pretty high cooldown spell, but you're probably going to force a Salve out of him with this, and that's just, you know, do the same thing again in 35 seconds, no worries. So uh, bottom lane looks pretty good. Meanwhile, up at top, Lelis going to be laning into Tomato and Stinger on the Spectre and the Lich. Meanwhile, MSS just kind of going to chill, steal some gold. Though he did start with Shadow Walk uh, rather than uh, the Janada as we usually see. But, you know, you can just uh, get off the right clicks with the Orb of Venom. Be super annoying. They're really trying hard to kill this board, but Lelis is just going to straight up deny it. So that's uh, unfortunate. Yeah, he really wanted that uh, invis so he can get that first blood bottom, but they were they were unable to secure it as they went on the wrong target. How's mid lane looking? Oh, pretty solid for Chris Luck. He's got the wave on his hill and also has uh, five denies as of right now. Quinn getting harassed up. He's got a healing self soon. Yeah, they both have healing selves. They're good. Yeah, it's been very violent. I mean, the fact that both the carries have more CS Top. in the mid lane that really shows that you guys have just been going at it. But yeah, MSS, he be in some trouble, but he's going to get himself away. Not killed off just yet. This, uh, this Lich Spectre lots lane, of action. pretty fun. Bottom also oh. with lots of action. Yeah, Clockwork kind of being run down here, but again, has those cogs just to back them away. He's going to keep himself alive, but he doesn't have a salve, unless that's one of the courier. Nope, that is in fact the science's courier. So he's actually going for the long walk home. These brown boots have become very handy at just, you know, running. <laughs> two journeys back to base he's made so far. Thank you, That's brown That's all right. Boots. At least Sansa's some XP, right? Is Tomato good here? It's taking a lot of damage. The boar's on he's him. super slowed as well. The boar plus the orb of venom. It's uh, causing issues for the Spectre right now. And he's got a healing salve on the Lich, so Tomato is completely okay. A-okay. He's actually going for straight power mm -hmm. treads. Um, not going for any Wraith bands or anything like that. I've seen this quite a bit that. with these uh, players. He's got the magic wand first, but yeah, I mean, just starting like with a really early band of Elven skin, uh, I guess that's just like a little bit of damage to try and CS against the boars with, right? Mm -hmm. Bottom, again, Whisper. Jeez, this time this he might time. not be getting away. No, he's, he's... Oh, the fairy oh, part! That keeps him alive, the, the stick. stick as well. Those burst heals coming out every single time. Meanwhile, Schofield, he's okay as well. He manages to get himself over towards a tree line, coming in behind SVG, but that's a lot of damage. They're both going to lose their lives. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Yeah. They, uh, they, they, they saw a little glimmer of hope to get themselves a kill. They both run themselves into the meat grinder and both end up losing their life. Meanwhile, SVG is just like, hey, man, I want my mana back. See you later. Kills himself to the tower. Great place. And now he's going to bring the troll's items as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This is a big disaster for uh, Beast, Beast Coast now. Bounty also got the courier top. That was Spectre's oh courier. That had yeah, he dove, he magic dove into wand. the trees for that as well. Like, my guy knew uh, where that courier was yep. going. He's like, hey, you know what? They're going to try and dodge it, but I'm just going to bury myself in the trees and get it anyway. Meanwhile, uh, Tomato will at least claim them boar money. That's something, I guess. Nice mm -hmm. amount of XP as well on those balls. But he is free farming top, the Spectre. So the Lich spec yeah. lane doing a hell of a lot of work. That's for sure. No one, no treads for the spec either. So yeah, it doesn't feel great. We've got to wait for that for the courier. It's going to be another minute. Just a huge delays. Uh, what's our mid situation? Quinn's actually retreated to the jungle right now, so he's 28 and 3, but a couple of these are jungle creeps. Meanwhile, Chris Luck has just been kind of 
hoarding the mid lane creeps for himself. It's 33 and 7 currently, so he's going to have himself a decent amount of uh, Farmer Rooney as he calls out that courier. Going for uh, just some boots of speed, clarity, and stuff. Okay, some, uh, we're going to see some deaths on bottom, that's for sure. MSS has TP down here. He's in biz. Oh, is he thinking about the courier? Don't think about the courier, bro. Get that sound. Yeah, he wants right? Whisper. He wants Whisper. He knows what's up. He knows the hero to get. And yeah, Whisper now realizing that it's time. Oh, nice cogs coming out. Whisper now turning around and throwing in a couple of these blades of wisdom whilst he's at it as well. They're able to take down SVG. MSS oh, still SVG. pretty healthy. But they're fighting up into him right now, and the troll's just not interested. We'll come over and throw some. Oh, he missed! Doesn't actually quite catch Schofield either. Whisper's still hunted. He throws another glaive towards MSS. You are got to be careful as well as these glaives of wisdom. They really hurt him. He gets Yikes. himself a double. Oh Can he get himself God. another hit? No, because you are. He's actually going to drop the Wraith Band, Fairy Fire, and Wand himself. But Schofield's oh, coming no, around the side are. here. Gets him in the corner. They get another kill. Three this kills. one Schofield Dyer's will get, but three top kills on the bottom lane of the Beast Coast. This is a disaster for them. Damn, dude, I, I, I did say there was going to be kills going down. I did not expect Beast Coast to be the ones yeah. collecting those kills. What Call an happened? ambulance, but not for me. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Chris Luck doing a decent amount of damage towards Quinn here as these guys just battle into each other, get each other super duper low, but in the end, no one will fall. It, it feels like QC's aggression is not very much calculated, you know? They aren't considering that uh, Beast Coast can actually just turn around and fight. Like, that co first cog onto the Winter Wyvern and the bounty just turned that situation so well for them. Certainly did, sir. Attack. Certainly did. Now, SVG going for a little bit of a, uh, a roam, but unfortunately Schofield is following him, so he's going to kind of reveal everything right now. And they're kind of wrapping around in the middle lane here, SVG. Can he do anything about this? Quinn's in some trouble, yeah, and in with Tomato as well. Yeah, he's already gone. He's dead before he knew it. SBG just kind of rocks up, like, oh well, uh, oh, I guess I'll take the XP then. It's something. Dyer's courier has been killed. MSS, my God, this guy is just too annoying. He is, Dyer's he is just fiending couriers right now, attack. left, right, and center. <laughs> look, look at Stinger with this courier. He's like flying it around. He's like, oh no, I'm not gonna let you get mine, bro. <laughs> I bet supports get their courier killed the least of any other role. Oh time. yeah, for sure, for sure. Dyer's I get my my curry is. is under I mean, it, it's I kill my curry so much. <laughs> I'm not even gonna pretend I don't. Like I, I just forget about them. I'm laning, and you know when you're in the safe lane, and your curry just decides, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go on a bit of a tour. I want to take the scenic route and see the enemy tower and stuff, and they just end up dying all the time. It happens. Mm -hmm. So oh, man, shield for spec is really nice. Has actually got out of the jungle. Oh, okay. Lich gonna take yeah. a fall here. He he, he, he smashed he... again top tower too. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, the net's kind of closing around Tomato right now, pretty pretty heavily actually. He's running out of space to farm already in his own jungle, so he might want to move top and try and put some pressure. But fighting into troll isn't exactly the dream. I don't know. Spectre, he's got that radiance queued up straight away. Doesn't even want to go for another item first, just straight into the radiance. I think if you are going raidy this game, then this is absolutely the way to do it. Like, don't go drums, don't go meteor hammer, don't go blade mail, just go straight in for the radiance and try and get it online as quickly as possible so you can be that brick wall hero and find yourself another big item as soon as possible afterwards. But that does require you to have a good laning phase and a pretty peaceful game where QC aren't going to be pushing into them that hard and I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. We'll see if he's allowed to get away with this or not. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's kind of a tough situation. I think when you do this and you die once, it's really, really bad because you don't actually have that many stats, right? Radiant oh, MSS, seven. what? Walks into the tower range. Radiant that actually hits the tower range, huh? You are being hunted by Schofield here. My man's just trying to get some creeps, and Schofield's like, no, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna throw spells at you. But Dude. once more, he's, he's, he might actually get himself a free kill here. This is kind of awkward, actually. Field. What can you do, buddy? Yeah, the TP the TP out. There's, there's a shark at the circuit. Oh, oh my no. god. How does he get no away way. with that? Dude, How does all he get away with that. Hold on. All MSS had to do was walk back to the cog that he got burned on. And shark in him. I think he didn't expect that because he walked around, you know, he didn't want to get his he didn't want to get burned again. I think he and... didn't have enough mana and I think no, he, had, SPG... he had a mango. No no no, he had a mango. He had a oh mango. he had the mango, okay. I thought SPG. Yeah, he had a mango. Him. Well, at least I'll get yeah, Stinger yeah. anyways. I mean, that, that, yeah, they're gonna get the mid tower too. Yeah. Well, Sansa has a drums now. I'm so surprised that Sansa even has any farm. 
They're here. jumping on to the Queen of Pain. On to Death Prophet, sorry, right now, and they will make short work of her, Schofield. It's getting so much work done. Quinn, he's dead. They did get the tower already, but still, I mean, that's that's a high-value kill. This is more space. This is slowing down the game for Tomato to find that Radiance, which is what it's all mm -hmm. about right now. They did lose the top and the mid tower, though. They don't really have any potential of taking towers themselves. But the gold lead is even. They have got uh, plenty of deep push abilities on the side of Beast Coast with that Lina. We're gonna have to see what uh, QC's next play is with the Bounty Hunter level 6. He, 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 I don't think he's level 6 yet, right? He's not 6. He needs a little bit more. He's not level 6. It's not the game he was looking for, that's for sure. Not yet, anyway. Maybe there's still potential in the future, but. Right now, it's uh, pretty sad for the bounty. MSS. Oh, he's been seen here. They've got him inside the uh, the sentry ward. Tracked up. He's, kill him. he's just going to solo him. <laughs> Basically, Schofield soloing the guy. Just a dagger from uh, from Smarter helping out. And they're not going to get a kill either. They don't even get the track kill in response. Schofield just runs away. He's been able to Top. escape on like under 100 HP about 10 times this game already. Meanwhile, it's just so dead. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> Last is going to bring him down. So much damage. Dude, the new Necrobook, like where they made it um, hero damage, is so freaking strong. Uh, I Killing people with the roar. Like that list yeah. just disappeared so quickly. So nice. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Yeah. It is pretty nasty. It can't farm creeps that quickly, but. If you're snowballing with beasts and you're just running around roaring people with Necrobook, you're just gonna kill them. Well, let's see. He's, he's had a pretty, pretty lovely game. A, ch a chuffing old time. He's currently 5.3k net worth, the most farmed hero in the game. Quite a wealthy gentleman, this Lelis. And there's oh, the yeah. uh, level 2 Necrobook coming out for him, so. The rich get they almost richer. got level three. Yeah, how's spec they're doing? Three thousand net, net worth. I mean, three thousand gold in the bank. Yeah, almost to his uh, relic. This is gonna be a very very fast uh, radiance. I feel like QC need to make something happen so that uh, before the radiance, or at least try to smoke up and kill the spec there. It's just a bounty hunter hasn't found any success in this game, and again, he doesn't really play this hero that much because it's just a new hero for him, I believe. So he's not playing the same level, you know, MSS normally does. They might have found Lelis here. Yules from Chris Luck gonna set up for the LSA. Oh. Now Schofield getting us off in. Cogs come out as Solid well. He tries kill. to get out the rule, does do so. But a lot of damage coming out onto Lina Ooh. here. So Schofield has to come in with the hook shot. Meanwhile, Global Science being used for the bottom lane as they try to go onto Stinger here. Quincy Crew trying to look for the kill onto the Lich. Can they finish the job? Yes, they can. They will bring the Lich down. Meanwhile, Whisper now being targeted, but he's got a ton of damage. He's just dumping it into SVG. SVG has to pop the ultimate to get himself away. Does he get himself back? The Twin also pretty healthy here. And actually, Tomato's coming to the back lines here, trying to bring down Quinn and actually, Oh, I like that. Haunting away to make sure that he uh, cancels out the Spirit Siphon to make sure they get the kill on to Quinn. And that is two kills going the way of Whisper. 14 nice. permanent intelligence stolen so far. They're playing very, very well on Beast Coast right now. This is uh, exactly the kind of place that they need to make to get some the ball rolling, especially for their Spectre. The Silencer, like, honestly, the Silencer is the biggest surprise of this game. Yeah, he's ruining he's it. He's 414, he's got farm, and the bounty hunter even tried to gank him bottom and they failed. Uh, so <laughs> he's actually getting out of control, and I think uh, this is going to be a huge, huge problem. Also, I don't feel like QC are playing together in any way, right? Like, even the Troll Warlord, this is the first time he's rotated towards uh, the top lane to farm up here. And I feel like he should have been doing this quite long ago, so the Beastmaster can play with his team. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, like, their farm is slowed down quite a bit. Quinn? Quinn? Quinn. <laughs> oh, God, this was not where you wanted to go, though. They actually back themselves out. The hook shot across over not towards SPG instead. The roar comes out of the back lines onto the Lena. Lena's going to be taken out of the fight immediately. Meanwhile, they actually can't get the kill into Quinn. Singer's going to drop, and now Whisper's going to go the same way as well. Quincy crew kind of realizing that, wait a minute, when we're as five, we are much, much stronger. And they will take down <laughs> the a bunch first of time. Yeah. For the first time in this game, they actually went together and accomplished something. I mean, they also got track kills too, and they, they might even go for one more. Nope, just gonna get the bounties here and back off. So they're gonna, they're gonna get four bounties too on the side of mm. QC here. 
Got some kills, got some money, got some good stuff going on. But unfortunately, on the flip side, on the other side of the coin, uh, we got a Spectre. And she's got herself that sacred relic. And she is about 1,000, uh, sorry, 850 gold away from her radiance. Mm -hmm. Things getting scarier by the minute. Troll finished off his Battle Fury, so he's got his farming item, but... Yeah. Okay, very neck and neck right now, I'd say. In fact, I'd even say a little bit of an advantage for Beast Coast right now, because these are the guys which don't want to be fighting currently. And that's pretty much what's happening. You know, was the last fight it was the first one, like five-man rotation from Quincy Crew we've seen so far, which is very beneficial for Beast Coast. Their Spectre is not feeling pressured at all. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Also, I just want to point out that um, if you inspect the Spectre's items, uh, Tomato has a genuine Soul Diffuser with a gem wards purchased, and uh, she has one ward purchased. The entire time of playing Spectre, Tomato has purchased one ward. What a carry player. If they're free, bottom. They are free. Yeah, bottom there. Yeah, Whisper could be in some trouble here. Try to get out the ultimate, but was silenced by Quinn too quickly, and he's just gonna lose his life. Now Stinger comes in, but he doesn't want to get too close to this death prophet as he just gets evaporated. And Schofield hook shot will miss. And again, Quincy Crew realizing their strength and now just bringing the fight to Beast Coast and cleaning up hero after hero. They cannot fight into this. They can't fight into the exorcism. And the Beastmaster as well. Super, super strong. Yeah, now that the Beastmaster has connected with this team and playing with the Necrobook. This DP feels a lot stronger too. Dash. She is in a not a longer slightly pleasure. risky position, to say the least. They see her and she dies right now. It's like genuinely terrible. Gotta get Ooh, that radiance. Like we're right. Yeah, radiance finished up. All right. Yeah, the Spectre can no longer have to scream at a team saying, "Just wait for radiance. Just wait for radiance." She's got it now. And they, they're probably yeah. gonna look for a play here. And this is a 17-minute radiance on the Spectre. That is a remarkably good timing. Let's see what they can do. It's a good. It's a good time to smoke up on Dire because the Death Prophet ultimate is on cooldown too. Yeah, yeah, they want to fight. Well, yeah, they should Clockwork want to has fight. put his smoke in too. There we go, yeah, smoke up kids. instantly. Now the thing is, this is going to be quite obvious because, you know, the Spectre's turning up to lane with Radiance and everyone else is missing. Like, you got to be like, hmm, okay. They're probably looking for something right now, but they're going to find the Winter Wyvern regardless. And uh, that's going to be an easy kill. I mean, when the roar comes down, but now the Spectre coming in on top of MSS right now. Wants to kind of find these... Beastmaster heroes like the the summons are just kind of cancel them out as much as possible. Global Silence comes down with the troll wall just walking into this one. They've taken down SVG and now, well, this fire's getting a little bit awkward here. Spectre's sitting on the front lines and everyone else sitting behind them. It's a, it's a good movement from Beast Coast, but then again, that was a lot of ulties thrown in. Hookshot, die back them, instantly. Global Silence, <laughs> and what do they get for it? SVG. He buy back and died again. <laughs> Two deaths on yeah, yeah, okay. SVG. Like <laughs> Two SVGs. Yeah. It's not that bad for QC. They can just revive on this Wyvern. DP ult will be up again. And I think just going to go battle. The haunt is on cooldown. Yeah. Spectre is going to take this time to farm up his next item. But this is going to be a five-man play from QC soon. Either to take Roshan. Most likely, they should just take Roshan. So they get that Aegis up on the Troll Warlord. Before they just haunt, keep yeah. on taking the tier 2 towers. 94 seconds yeah. to do it in. And uh, the Wyvern's back in 10. So yeah, they've got a tight timing to work to. But they should definitely be able to do it. Mm. The Necrobook is going to be on cooldown though, apart from that, they do have everything up on QC. Yeah, and uh, they're getting straight in there. Rocket Flare is going to see them heading over in this direction. I don't think they can contest this though. Not, not without Horn. It's just not possible. I mean, they don't have Horn, they don't have Global Silence. Two huge fights of this team fight gone. Into the pit we go. And it looks like they're going to get in. I mean, they're pinging it, but <laughs> I don't know why. Like, there's nothing you can do, guys. They're letting each other know, hey guys, Roshan is being killed. Yeah. But yeah, there's nothing they can do. Without Haunt, it's completely useless. Snipe, bro snipe Roche for the uh, rocket fly. That's the play. True, true. So now that Exo is on cooldown, I think QC can take this time to farm up a little bit. And then once the next Exo's up, they want to make the play. And this is where the big 5v5 fight is going to happen. But Beast Coast want to take that opportunity when Spectre's Haunt is up instantly to take a fight. While DP ult is on cooldown. That's their one opening they're gonna have. Yeah, they've got their Yasha. Punish QC. And they've got. Dyer's top tower four, is under attack. And they've got Global Silence. Radiance middle tower is under attack. But they're into an Aegis, so yeah. Not, not, not really ideal. Thank you, 
They're going for it though. Beast Coast smoked up. If they find Lelis, if they manage to catch out Lelis, then uh, that's a pretty big deal. And here we go, Hookshot comes in, perfectly landed onto the Beastmaster here. He's trying to turn around with the roll, will get it off, but unfortunately he's lost his life already. And Tomato just going to help clean up those illusions along with the Chain Frost. Beautiful play from Beast Coast. This does so much for them. Oh yeah, wrong lane for Lelis to be in too. Bottom is the one lane you didn't want to go to, especially while your DPR tank pulled on. Radiant structures are What's Troll going to do? Is he going to hit this tower? Dyer's it's kind of scary because it's a clockwork or the Lina TPs in with their Yules, right? Yeah, so he's just going to back off. They're going to go towards the mid tower. This is a better play from Beast Coast. Bottom tier 2 is extremely difficult Radiant's to try and kill at this point. Has fallen. Beastmaster is alive now in 10 seconds. I think it's time for QC to smoke up. They have the BKB. They got the Beastmaster alive. I know, but uh, at the same DP, time, by the way, has like, they didn't drop any ultis for her. They've still got Haunt, they've still got Global mm -hmm. Silence. I still think it's not that attack. easy for them to fight into Beast Kids, even with its Aegis. Uh, I think they're fine, because they're going to get the BKB surprise, right? The Spectre still can't do anything to this BKB. No, neither can like any of the other heroes on Beast Coast. So right now, DP is the strongest hero on the map. Going for it, though, so. Yeah, Yawar can just TP bottom onto tier 2. Like, that's the cycle that's going to happen. Oh, they're gonna get a Lich. If they can run away with Beast Coast now, just sacrificing the Lich, that's amazing. Yep, it looks like they're getting away with it. Lelis, he's already looking for the plus one though, and he might just find it. The roar comes out on Schofield on the sidelines here. Wait, and, Lich is not uh, even dead. Oh, the Lich is gonna TP out of this one. Meanwhile, Schofield, yeah, he's not gonna be so lucky. He's out of there. See you later, buddy. And they will yeah, turn they around to and kill off. off the Lich, just, just to make sure. He had to curse the Lich, so he doesn't run away. <laughs> Not the ideal situation, but it's still pretty good for a decider for Quincy Crew. Two yeah, clean kills. Man. I mean, no calls, Cotton, but it's okay. They didn't use Exo. That's all that matters. As long as Exo's up, they can always take every single team fight. It doesn't even matter if Beastmaster's Primal Roar is on cooldown. The Exo is the only thing that's relevant for QC. So they're going to go bottom here. Maybe go for the tier 2 even. Uh, how's Troll doing? Oh, okay. He's almost got BKB. And Age is about to run out in one and a half minutes. So maybe if he can finish BKB in the next uh, minute, they'll have like 30 seconds left. I don't think they're going to be able to use his Aegis. This was just a, pretty much a farming Aegis uh, for the Troll Warlord. Farming Aegis on a Troll Warlord. <laughs> That's not something you're too happy about. But at least it gets him towards his BKB, which I think is... Uh... Definitely the, the, the big item of the game for Quincy Crew. If they don't start making stuff happen with this BKB though, I'm worried for them. Horn comes out actually down in the bottom lane. They're able to just blow up Quinn and SVG in the same breath. Like that that was uh, brutal. The Guna Blade. What a spell. Damn. Not able to get that BKB, huh? And he was also sitting on Agi Tread, so he got caught with his pants down. A wee bit. A uh, wee bit. And uh, also, I think the Desolate uh, being a pretty big deal here as well. Do you see how much damage he took from Desolate, actually? Uh, 360 mm -hmm. over two seconds. I mean, that's a mixture of the Desolate buff and the um, change to Haunt now attacking immediately. But Chrysler could be in some trouble here, but he's got that Lincolns, actually. Uh, oh, they they, oh, they, they can't do anything while the Death Prophet is dead. This is the time where Beast Coast yeah. feels so confident. DP dead, you know, they can just go out take any tower or push out any fly lane. And miss, unfortunately. Well, this though is very dangerous tomato. move, oh my. Hmm. Is he good here? Chain Frost comes out, but the BKB's out from Quinn. He's just trying to run down the Spectre as best he can right now. Spectre needs to find a way out of this fight. Throws a dagger over in towards Quinn to try and get himself up to the high ground, but pops right back down again because Yuar's waiting for him as well. Whisper just going to try and throw his life into them right now. Says, run, run, little Spectre. And Spectre going no, for the TP out. Is there anything to no, cancel really. it? There is not. The Spectre will live. Great sacrifice from this, but yeah, that was they, they couldn't ignore him so and run past him. Like the Beastmaster's blink out cancelled, it was down to I think two seconds. He was about to blink and roar the specter, and then Sansa just started hitting him, so wasn't able to get this back. Yep, very what much a hero. So. F's in chat for Sansa, boys. I think he deserves it. Show, show your respect, guys. But uh, Death Prophet, what's she completing? She's got the plate, plate mail lined up. Oh, uh, Chris Lux, you good, buddy? Yours is out, just to slow him down. Eh, uh, Tomato's here as well. It's a, it's a very hard kill to get. Yeah, it's a Lina with the Lincolns. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more of this build where mid laners buy Lincolns casually, mm -hmm. and I think it's really nice. It's 
It's very great stats item, though. Isn't it? Yes, good stats and very, very cheap from the last time they actually buffed this item. And it really helps against the Beastmaster. It's not going to be able to roar. Alina. Twenty-five minutes into this game, we've got a four K gold advantage for the Quincy crew, the crew of the Quincy. Mm. Uh, do you have any idea what that means, by the way, Quincy crew? I, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably Let's ask see. one of them, honestly. Yeah, I'm curious now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think Beast Coast are pretty happy with how this game's gone for them so far. I think they're in a pretty commanding position. Um, they're going for the Basher next on the Spectre. It's good. Uh, once he gets a Bissel Blade, he, you're just going to be able to haunt in, maybe even go on to the Bounty, the Beast, DP one of those guys, even the Winter Wyvern. But I feel like they have a lot of damage for this Winter Wyvern. Like, just natural random damage that just falls out is under attack. from Lina or Clock or something. That's how yeah. it feels. Every fight, he just dies on the Wyvern. Uh, it's really difficult for SVG this game to stay alive. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Yeah, I'm glad he's got this Philosopher's Stone, so he can at least earn some money whilst he's dead, but... That's uh, going to be happening a lot this game. Top tower also went for a BKB this game, so they're going to have this triple BKB, which is very nice. I feel pre Quincy Crew, all they need to do is just win one team fight to take over this game. But Beast Coast need to like continuously win multiple team fights uh, to be able to even take objectives, right? They don't really have that much tower damage, Radiant's where Quincy Crew, they got this Beastmaster, Troll Warlord, DP. Oh, they try to catch onto up. a creep, but they're still going to be able to cancel SPG's TP regardless. But unfortunately, Lance is just laying the hurt into the Thanks. poor old Clockwork. So that's a bit of a clumsy mistake from the Clockwork there, just trying to get in a li little bit too pigeonholed in on canceling a TP and, in fact, giving his life for it in the end. And that's Trackle, too. This Bounty Hunter now has a four staff, which is very nice to get away from the Clock, save his allies from the Lena Yules combo. Almost MKB on the Troll Warlord. He needs about a thousand gold. Yeah, not too oh. far away, but they're going in for this right wow. now. The horn's being used, they've already taken down Quinn. Quinn immediately gets incinerated. Now look towards SMSS as well, but they don't have the dust for him, so instead they'll find that oh nice bash onto the live and just to stop him getting out that uh, well cold embrace, and that's gonna be the extra kill. And guess what? Roshan is up if they want it. And some spider leg. Who's that belong to? That bet that better not be. The enemy spider legs. Okay, it's not, it's there. Right? Good, good. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Damn. Quinn dying like this is so bad can't outrun a wild for Quincy. Guy. They really need to cover him or he needs to get better positioning. Because every time he's dead, Quincy can't take any team fights whatsoever. It's actually just impossible. And now that they get Roshan on Beast Coast, Beast Coast is in an amazing position now. Attack. Yeah. Oh boy, my boy Silencer. He goes for the plus two permanent intelligence steal. He wants to be mm, smart. Okay, okay. Because it's a core, um, right? Scaling so lineup. Yeah. He will get a lot of damage if uh, they keep killing people with that. As a support, you definitely want to take the 30 arcane curse damage. That thing does a lot. Dyer's bottom tower is under it slaps. It suddenly mm -hmm. does. Especially against a troll. Yep. It feels really nice to use a burst of troll. But. Alas, it's not to be this game. Lich. And, and Death Bright. It's actually a super value game for it. There's a lot of hero spamming spells this game. Uh, yeah, Lich isn't in a great way, is he? He's, he's, he's gonna get beaten down here. And they're gonna turn this into more, actually, so on the front lines, but now in comes Tomato. And this is a guy you don't really want to fight. He's uh, popping that Manta. Maybe a little bit early there as it all comes down to the sidelines onto the Clockwork and Lairs with the BKB. Three BKBs pop to try and kill this Clockwork. Okay, alright. And um, they're just like, fine, you know what? You want the clockwork? You want to pop three BK BKBs That's to kill him? Expensive. Sure, go ahead. We'll back away. That was so expensive. I mean, the initial yeah. Wyvern ult onto the Lich was to try and catch uh, another hero there. It missed. And then the roar onto the clock. I mean, these are kills, but you're using three BKBs. You're also using your Exo. And now when the supports of Beast Coast are alive, they're going to be able to run out onto the map and play very aggressively on Quincy. And Quincy are going to just have to dodge them completely until this exorcism back up again. That's a long time. 100 seconds that they're so weak, they won't be able to yeah. take fights. Now the ball's in the other court. And I want to see Beast Coast go for this. I want to see Beast Coast just group up and uh, try and find some kills, try and smack someone in. Where will that be, though? Well, so far, 
They are not looking Don't particularly interested, but it's... with the TPN for the Clockwise, does he have a smoke? He does not. Stinger does, though. But Whisper just wants to push out mid first. Kind of understandably, to be fair. Those pings coming on over. They're pinging actually Chris Luck here, but they're going to get the easy kill onto uh, Winter Wyvern. Burn MSS, you are. Quinn, all backing themselves away. Cannot stay long. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower. There's a few interesting top. timings in this game as well. For example, the bounty hunter at level 20, uh, sorry, the uh, clockwork at level 20 is going to get the rocket flare true sight, which is going to be a pain in the ass for the bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. That talent is really good at killing wards also, but he's still only like level 15 right now. It's going to need to stay alive through yeah. a couple more team fights before he gets there. Oh, Radiance they missed the stun from the Lich Eos combo. Oh dear. That's why uh, MSS got out. Middle tower MSS got yield up, and then the Lina didn't land the stun, so he was able to force himself out of there. Whoopsie. Yeah, that's why he's laughing. <laughs> Thank you for the context. Yeah, a little bit uh, lackadaisical on the side of uh, Beast Coast, I would say. They're not really trying too hard to force anything, even though they uh, were in a much stronger position, and now this uh, exorcism is going to be back up for Quinn. And this is going to be in trouble for uh, Beast Coast, you know, the next bite is going to be kind of questionable. Luckily, Roche isn't going to be out for a very long time, so... Oh, BKB uh, immediately popped from Quinn here as they jump forward onto the Clockwork. That seems extreme, but they will be able to get the Clock. Raw comes down as well. They're throwing a lot into him, let's go field all that. New Stinger, buddy, they're going for this. They're going to drop the Global Silence and the Haunt onto two right now. So they're going to look for Lelis, unless he's being eaten apart right now. Tomato jumping every which way around the fight. They want to try and find your wife. Yeah, oh my god, Whisper just disappears. Spectre not doing much better against him either. Trying to fight up into your wife. That's not really happening. Oh my Quinch god. Rocks up. He's got the SP going. Back. This might be a very dead low. In comes Chris Luck trying to back him up. Your wife's taking the damage and he's going to die. Now they look towards Quinn. Can they bring him down there? They've got to break the siphon first and now they can look towards this kill, but they can't keep up with him. They can't find the kill. Dagger comes out, but he's already gone. Meanwhile, MSS is going to get killed off by Wisp, or is he? Never mind, the uh, the Essence Ring 4 staff keeps him alive. They're more interested in trying to find this Death Prophet, but Death Prophet is in the base, long gone, nice and safe. No kill for you. Damn, that Daedalus, uh, Lina, did a lot of damage onto the Troll Warlord there. Uh, oh, the Troll did. actually thought he could kill the Spectre again, because he had 12 stacks of uh, Fervor at that moment, but then the Radiance Lina just showed up with that Daedalus, and he Radiant has like, he doesn't have enough lifesteal, obviously. I mean, I love the decision to go there from Beast Coast. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but they just recognize how strong they are. You know, with mm -hmm. the global silence and the haunt, they can just jump in and kill two heroes and beautiful blink from Chris Lunk as well, just uh, quickly reacting to the bounty hunter, not getting his blink sign uh, canceled out and getting away to safety. Yeah, and again, this carry... this is... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. All right, okay, so this carry Lina build is like very, very nice uh, when you're playing with Spectre because late game Spectre is not actually a hard carry, right? Like he's a very good tank but he's not going to be dishing out as much damage, so the Lina is going to take up that role of being able to do a lot of physical damage while the Spectre provides all the vision and keeps running into the team fight. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I would like to see on the Spectre is actually an Aghanim Scepter. It's an item I've been building a lot on the hero, and I feel like when you're playing against heroes which like are just extremely mobile, it just gives you the ability to get on top of them. Once you have this Abyssal, the Aghanims is a great follow-up item. Like, it, it's obviously not going to give you the same amount of stats as Scadi, but it's it's really strong at just kind of finding a target and quickly blowing them up, and you don't have to commit Haunt to it, and you've got, you know, literally global presence on enemy heroes, so it can be very, very strong, but it seems yeah. like he's going for the Scadi instead. Well, he'd probably rather get Aghanims from the Roshan or something than buy it himself. Uh, yeah, if possible, if possible, but... Yeah, um, if you get Scotty, like you always got the option to get a free Ags, right? But if you buy Ags, then you get a free. Ro uh, no free I mean, if, you, if you buy the Ags, you can't get the free. Yeah, exactly. Scotty. Boom! There he goes. So he's playing that yeah. game, and he's got an Arcane Rune too. Oh boy! They're being wrapped this around is upon be... right now, but yeah, they kind of want a horn to be honest. This is gonna be a really good fight for Beast Coast if they can Dyer's use his Arcane Rune effectively. Not if Chris Luck gets blown up first, goes in for the bounty. What's going on with Quincy Crew though? They're backing out. They are scared. Yep, they're positioning. Posi they don't have the position to advantage for that fight. Mm. Like, their exit path is blocked off. Oh no, not like this. DP? DP? Oh, she heals herself. But Chris Luck is there. They're following her. 
They found her. Horn comes out as well just to make sure they can get the kill onto Quinn here, and they will do exactly that much. Meanwhile, Tomato jumping across the map, trying to find another target here. These goddamn slow Horn illusions making it very, very tricky, but Schofield comes in, uses the cogs to blast back Yawa here. Dagger's gonna follow as well. You are trying to gank his way back up onto the higher ground and will be successful now with MSS and SVG coming in to help him out as well. But Chris Luck comes in, might have the damage for SVG here. Can he finish the job? Can't quite do it. Speaking on less though. Oh, Science has a refresher orb, by the way. What? <laughs> okay, all right. Yep. He was actually going for Hex at first, and I guess he yeah, changed he his mind and going for a refresher. Pretty... He, he watched the previous series, watched Envy, and was like, hey, you know what, that item's cool. Jumping onto Chris Luck, put a blink away, tried to get him with a roar. They popped the Lincolns with the track and then tried to grab him with a roar, but it wasn't quite enough. I don't know. Quinn got caught out quite a lot this game. He did, didn't he? Yeah, a lot of a lot of Lagoonas coming out onto him. Another Global Science coming down once again to blow up SVG. And well, Sansa will lose his life for this one, but look at the damage being poured into Lelis by Chris Luck here. He does have an MVM that's on top of him, but he doesn't really care. Just... <laughs> just gets exploded. Oh my god. They are... They're gone. Q QC just got wiped. Yep. Yep, they keep, they're just winning fights after fights now. Quincy Crew have not been able to get that footing in this game anymore. Especially with having Quinn dead. Before these fights start. It's really they have bad. a buyback yeah. on the troll, but... Wait, are they actually gonna take this? I guess so, huh? Because it's 4 versus 5. And they have troll ulti. Yeah, they're buying back into it. It's going to be a 4 and 4 now as they jump forward to you. Why drop it so low immediately though? Has to pop the ultimate on illusion. Oh, no. That is not ideal. What are they doing here? Tomato up to the high ground, just running over the cliff. And now Quinn could be in a bad position. Look at Chris Luck just playing around him right now, using that range and abusing that range. They are just playing around this fight. Schofield does go in a little bit deep, gets punished for it. Chris Luck still trying to play around right now, but they don't have Whisper, they don't have Schofield. They will try and back themselves away. Lich on defensive here. Quincy Crew still looking for something, but I don't think they're going to find anything more than this. They will be happy they managed to get themselves a couple of exit kills here, but also, I'm a little bit disappointed they didn't get a little bit more. All they got is a clockwork. That is great yeah. for Beast Coast. They're actually playing Again. so well, especially Chris Wait, they Lock. Popped egg. Did they pop Exism for that? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, they did. They did. He had um, to blink in with the Exo to be able to take the fight, or else suspect it would just man up. Lich though, that could be an interesting kill. He doesn't have a buyback. They could put him on a big timer. Nope, they won't find him. And they get the D War too. Quincy Crew has to get out. They're retreating. This troll is not tanky yeah, whatsoever. Oh game. god. He got left behind. The crew left without him. Hey, Quincy Crew are not ride or die homies. They are. Ride goodbye. 80 seconds for Bounty Hunter too. I think this could be it, where Beast Coast just run down the lane and just try to initiate with a Spectre Haunt and Abyssal. Roshan has a refresher shot, by the way. Oh, here we go. The Roshan. Double Laguna They're gonna get that to, first uh, for sure. I'm just calling this now. This game's gonna end with uh, Double Laguna onto Death Prophet. Yeah, I I'm not sure he's gonna have item slots for to have refresher. He's gonna buy the Satanic next. True enough. Yeah, he actually has it. He actually has a gold for it. Dude, this Lina is actually crazy. This Lina is a plus one right here. Hell yeah. This is a plus one Lina, and he's actually playing so well. Seriously. Yeah, um, yeah. He, I mean, watching him in these fights is hilarious. Like, they keep trying to run at him, and he just blinks away all over the place. Like, they, they can't actually close the gap on him. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, utilizing the. I think, yeah, he's going to keep the enchanted quiver as well, because he's finding so much value from this item. Just, you know, with the Light Strike Array, Dragon Slave, and then uh, right. enchanted quiver hit from match range. Like, it's really good. They're taking this Roche. I think they need to do something, but Quincy Crew, they've got to get in here quick. This Roche is going down very quickly. Chris Luck has a ton of damage. They will get it down. Down goes the Ages, Cheese, everything going the way of uh, the die right now. Now they jump into this one, and the Goonblade comes down. Lelis has taken out of the fight, and Quinn's going the same way as well. They are dead without buyback, and Yawar's going to get beaten in. Make it a third oh. kill, fourth kill. GG's are cool. Doesn't matter how many kills there are. The game's got them over. That's what's happened. Game number two goes away of Beast Coast as they get their clean 2-0 sweep in this best of three series against the tournament favorite Quincy Crew. I didn't see this one coming, but it was a hell of a performance. Jesus. Very, very good stuff. With a stand-in, no less. I mean, these guys are repping. Beast Coast, I got them scary. Dude, 
I mean, I I was doubt, I was doubting Beast Coast because they don't have the carry player, but Tomato actually played very well, especially in this series, uh, and that was really really nice. But Chris Lock though, this man definitely has to be the MVP of both of these games, that's for sure. And I guess Quincy Crew really has.